Hi, I'm Alexa Mira. I'm a so assistant professor at Ohio State University reporting for um, ACR 2020. I'm here, Dr. Kathy Calabrese. Today we're going to talk about immune-related adverse events and treatments for uh, checkpoint inhibitor inflammatory arthritis and polymeldramatica. And so, Cassie, go for it. Oh, a little thank bit. You. Thanks, Alexa. Thanks for having me um, on Room Now. Um, and, you know, I will never cease to be amazed by kind of the rapidity um, and speed at which uh, IRA Ease has grown at a topic, uh, as a topic at ACR. Um, I can remember four or five years ago, there were a small handful of abstracts in this year. Um, there are a countless number of abstracts and we had our fourth annual study group yesterday and just thinking back to the early days of IRAEs when we didn't know anything about diagnosis or treatment and we might not know everything now or far from it, but we've certainly come a long way. Um, and uh, at our study group yesterday um, for IRAEs, immunopathogenesis, um, one of the big topics was treatment. Uh, one of the biggest questions is surrounding how do you treat these patients who develop rheumatic IRAEs? And there's still a lot of uncertainty in this area, but it's really, our knowledge is really growing. And, you know, the most common manifestations we see of rheumatic uh, symptoms in the setting of immunotherapy is inflammatory arthritis and then also this kind of polymyalgia rheumatica-like entity. Um, and the treatment of these patients, uh, which is such a, a hot topic and huge knowledge gap, um, it really depends on a lot of things. Um, and I think front ranging from their tumor type um, to the severity of their rheumatic IRAE to, um, you know, what uh, their response to prednisone and whether or not they're going to continue their immunotherapy or not. And in some patients, and also the comfort level of the oncologist. So these things all kind of play into our ultimate treatment plan. Do you for these see? With, what was that? Oh, sorry. What did you say? Sorry. No, I was say, do you see that steroids and glucocorticoids are still first line treatments before DMARDs and biologic? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the most interesting thing about rheumatic IRAEs is that they tend to persist um, in over, you know, 50% of patients, and that was highlighted in a, in a really nice study by Tony Bratton and Laura Capelli um, that was published last year. But that's not everyone. So, you know, the initial treatment is glucocorticoids, absolutely, and see, you know, how they do. Can you taper them off? But if you can't, very low threshold to start a steroid sparing agent, and whether that's methotrexate, which I think depends on the um, comfort of the oncologist, and also if their symptoms aren't severe and you have time. And if not, we really gravitate towards the IL-6 inhibitors um, as well as TNF inhibitors. And we talked about this a lot um, at our study group yesterday, kind of our growing knowledge of the safety and efficacy of these agents in the setting of, of cancer and immunotherapy. But we have a lot to learn, but um, those are those are the steroid sparing agents we gravitate towards. Are they using the IL-6 also in the polymyalgia rheumatica like? Yeah, that's a really interesting entity um, that presents usually like classic PMR, but also has some atypical features um, that we've observed and others have observed, including like an overlap inflammatory arthritis picture and in those patients who really gravitate towards IL-6 inhibitors. I mean, we have a, a growing number of patients in the Cleveland Clinic that have received that targeted therapy with, um, with very good success. So in that setting, IL-6 inhibition is, is treatment of choice as well. So I'll just ask the last question. Do you think that onco the oncology world is becoming more comfortable with our kind of either active cancer or cancer that's in remission and different things becoming doing that? Yeah, I think that's a really good question because, and it's definitely changed over time and it's really all about the risks and benefits and balancing, you know, of course we want the patient's cancer treated and that's why we're here to, so, you know, to improve their quality of life and allow them to continue their cancer treatment. And if not having them on an IL-6 inhibitor means they're, you know, terribly uncomfortable and can't resume their immunotherapy, then, you know, there's a balance there that has to be struck. So I do find that oncologists are, are realizing that rheumatic IRAEs can be, you know, while they don't end up patients in the hospital, they can be incredibly 
um, affecting their quality of life um, so that there is an increasing level of comfort with use of biologics as well as use of biologics concurrently with resuming immunotherapy, which is a big area of uncertainty that we have lots to learn about. Well, awesome. Um, I want to say thank you for this little brief interview as you were giving lectures and running the study groups and all over the ACR um, and doing different things. So amazing work um, and keep it up and we will keep you posted on the ACR 2020 with immune related adverse events and immunomodular therapy. So thank you, Cassie. Thanks for having me. I look forward to catching up on the meeting with the room now coverage. All right. Bye everyone.